1962, that would be 57 years ago, uh, when I was a young man ordained to the ministry, uh, my ordinate, ordinating church, the Metropolitan Baptist Church in, on Hazel Avenue in Fort Worth, uh, under the direction of Dr. E. Brian Clemens, ordained me to the ministry. That church had licensed me when I went there to, uh, to be associate, and then when they ordained me, uh, they also gave me a, a new uh, preaching Bible, and I preached out of that Bible for 57 years. It had been redone several times, of course, in those years, uh, but finally that Bible is to the point where it, it needs to find a good place just for me to remember preaching out of it for 57 years. So I, I told the group Wednesday night, uh, that was Wednesday night was my last time to preach out of that Bible after 57 years. And uh, it, it was just time uh, for a new Bible. And, and you'll notice it's twice as big as the, as the old one. Uh, that comes with age. Uh, I ordered a large print Bible, and I was really shocked when it came. I didn't expect it to be this big and heavy, but uh, it is. So this morning is the first time I'm preaching out of my new preaching Bible, so uh, if I'm a little slower turning the pages and finding my place, it's because I, I'm in new territory. Uh, it is the same kind of a Bible, but because of the print, the numbers and the pages uh, do not configure the same. But. Uh, uh, this kind of uh, Saturday, uh, Wednesday night was kind of sad, uh, using uh, a Bible that I've preached out of for 57 years. And uh, this morning is kind of exciting, uh, getting to preach out of a new Bible. So normally I find my place before you do, but this morning you may find your place before I do. So instead of uh, um, uh, me waiting on you, you may be waiting on me this morning when I gave you a scripture verse, but uh, I, I want you to turn to 1 Timothy chapter number 1. 1 Timothy chapter number 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. My opening text is verse number 15 in 1 Timothy chapter number 1. And I can actually also stand up perfectly straight and see this. Uh, I won't have to, if I bend over, it'll be out of habit. It won't be because I need to. But 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 15, the Apostle Paul writing to young Timothy said, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. I'm going to pause there for a minute to say that is my text. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. The rest of the verse says that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Now, Paul said this or part of this four times. Here in my text, uh, again in chapter 4, Again in 2 Timothy chapter number 2, and then finally in Titus chapter 3, verse number 8. It is noteworthy that he said this over four times, over four periods, to two young preachers in the faith. These are foundational. Uh, these are uh, pillars upon which to build the faith and pillars to build the church. You will find in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus, Paul giving a very strong emphasis that these young preachers were to make the Bible the Word of God, the foundation of their personal lives 
and the foundation of the churches and the foundation of the faith. So when he said four times to two different men in two different places, uh, this is a faithful saying, it applies as much today as it ever did. Paul had four particulars in mind when he said in his faithful saying. But I, by way of introduction, I want to remind us of something before I look at these. The same truth applies to you and I today. The same truths apply to all of the Bible. We are living in times when in the world, and I'm sorry to say, even in much of church life, for sure, in our nation, there is a de-emphasis, a minimizing of the value of the Word of God. We are seeing negative consequences in the world, in our nation, even in our churches, of a de-emphasizing of the Word of God. And so I want to remind you as we begin that Paul's statement is a faithful sir, a saying definitely applies to all of Scripture. I want to show you just a couple of places, places that you all know in Psalms chapter number one, the first psalm, which is the foundation of psalm, of all the psalms, begins with an emphasis upon the scriptures. There Paul says in Psalms, the, uh, David says in Psalms one, blessed is the man that walketh, first of all, in some things he does not walk, but then in what he does walk or lives his life. Blessed is a man, in verse 2, whose delight is in the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord. And in his law or word doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree, illustration, a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. David there likens a Christian who is diligent and faithful to the word to a tree planted by water, by river. And that tree grows rich with many leaves and much shade and is useful. Then, of course, in uh, the book of 1 Timothy, where we already are, I want you to just turn the page to chapter 4. Uh, I said that this is an admonition to a young preacher, but it applies to all Christians. Here's what Paul had to say about the Scriptures. He writes to Timothy, Till I come, give attendance, in chapter 4, verse 13. Give attendance to reading to exhortation, to doctrine, that is, teaching. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, that was a gift of preaching and teaching, which is given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly or completely to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. May I pause here to remind us all that the man in the pulpit, his number one job is to give himself to the Word of God and prayer, to feed the sheep. That's God's number one assignment to any man who is in the pulpit to feed sheep. He says in verse 16, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, teaching. Continue in them. I always 
tell young preachers, I remind them, as I was reminded as a young preacher, you better love to study. You can't be a pastor, you can't be a preacher if you don't like to study. It is a lifetime work that does not stop until death. But in a measure that is true for all believers, from the day you receive the Lord as your Savior, to the day that your journey on earth is done, we must be men and women of the Word of God. For in doing this, giving thyself wholly to the Word of God, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And then over there in 2 Timothy chapter 3, again Paul to this young preacher says in 3.16, 2 Timothy, all scripture, the word of God, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Ladies and gentlemen, the most profitable thing that you do every day of your life is when you sit down and you open your Bible and you read and you meditate and you ponder and you let the God of the universe speak to your heart. It's profitable for doctrine. The Bible will teach you. For reproof, it'll, it'll, it'll show you what in your life is right. For correction, it'll help you to correct what is not in your life. A right in your life for instruction in righteousness. It'll show you how to live. Now this is that the man of God because it was written to Timothy, but in practicality for all believers may perfect. Doesn't mean it'll make you perfect, but it means to mature you as a human being in the Christian life. And you will be thoroughly or completely furnished unto all good work to live a productive life and to be a blessing to others. Paul said to Timothy, particularly as a preacher in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God. My first responsibility, all those who teach the word of God, first responsibility is to God. To know his word and to get to know God. And then you will be an effective workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. We definitely have come to a place in the ministry of the word of God in our churches where rightly dividing the word of God doesn't seem to be important anymore. I hear so much of, well, you know, it isn't so much what you believe as it is to love everybody and get along. That's a half-truth. Loving people is right. Getting along is right. But how do you know how to love and how to get along if you don't know what God says? No, we must. The Bible is our guide in life and service. I don't want you to turn there because I'm going to go part of the verse where Moses is uh, writing to the people, uh, the Jewish people, the second generation that are about to enter, enter Canaan, and he is giving them instructions, and he's talking about the value and the importance of daily studying the law, which would have been the first five books of the Old Testament. And here's what he says to them. It's your life. Deuteronomy 34, 32, 47. It's your life. And folks, I want to tell you this morning. Um, uh, Paul said it's a faithful saying. It's worthy of all acceptation. The Bible is the heart beat of your life. Your Christianity will never arise, or never arise above your commitment to the Word of God. Neither will your or a job, neither will your marriage, neither will your children, neither will the church. It is our life. How well the old songwriter many years ago said, How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say? 
then to you he hath said, to you who for to Jesus for refuge have fled. That's a true saying. Now briefly, let me show you the four times that Paul said to young preachers and to two churches, what are faithful sayings? And they are four foundations of the Christian life, and they are four foundations of the Christian church. The first one is my text, 1 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 15. It's a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation. What is it? That Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. By the way, the humility of this man writing, he adds, of whom I am chief. And he was a great sinner, but God forgave him, showing that God will forgive and save all who humbly come to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you'll see in order of things, here is a foundational pillar. Here is the foundation laid for our eternal salvation. Not in creed, not in man, not in denominations, not in church, not in money, not in good work, but faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came to earth and he came to die. And because all man and all God, his shed blood paid for our sins. He came on an errand of mercy. He came on a mission of redemption. He himself said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Without Jesus Christ, there's no forgiveness of sins. There is no eternal life. There is no escape from the wrath of God to come on this planet. The foundation of a life is faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And so, first of all, Paul lays this foundational pillar of faith in Jesus Christ. What's a church? It is a group of born again, faith in Christ, receiving the grace, uh, baptized uh, into a local New Testament church. The foundation of everything we are is our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we build on that foundation. The second time Paul said something like that is in 1 Timothy chapter number 4. 1 Timothy chapter number 4, verse 8 and 9. 1 Timothy 4, 8 and 9. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. The second foundational truth that Paul tells these churches and these young preachers is build, exercise spiritually. What does that mean? Well, when you keep it in context, it means read your Bible, pray, go to church, grow in grace, grow in strength, become a strong Christian. Godliness and all that involves which I just mentioned. Now, I want you to notice, and he says it's a faithful saying. It is important. We know, we, uh, we meet so many uh, folks who claim to have received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, and that's kind of where it all ended. Didn't go any farther. Or we find some that, uh, we always talk to people, well, I used to go to church, I used to believe, I used to read my Bible. No, from the day you're saved, you work hard at being a good Christian through Bible study and prayer and church attendance and 
Stay the road from the wrong, move toward the right. Now it begins by saying, for bodily exercise profiteth little. <coughs> Those of you who come here regularly, you know that I am a regular exerciser. I go to the gym uh, almost daily. And uh, I've had some preacher friends criticize me for that very uh, severely. And this is the verse they use. Well, why do you bother to go to the gym? It's a waste of time. Verse 8 does not say, don't take care of your body. It's not what it says. For bodily exercise profiteth little. And in the Greek, it literally says for a little. Well, what does that mean? Well, you're only here for 70, 80 years. So don't use this verse not to take care of your body. God gave you your body. Your body, your physical body, is a trust from God. Take care of it. In case you ever noticed, once your body dies, you can't stay here. Anybody notice that? So take your body, God gave it to you, take care of it. Pardon me if I sound like something other than a preacher. Get a good night's sleep. Don't smoke. Don't drink. Stay pure. Eat right. If Judy were here, I would say stay away from McDonald's. She doesn't go anymore, so I can say that. Be careful what you eat. Take care of your body. It's a trust from God. The late Paul Harvey jokingly said, we here in America, we spend the first 35 years wrecking of our life, wrecking our bodies, and then we try to spend the next 35 putting them back together. Hey, your body's going to wear out soon enough. I don't care how good you take care of it, if you live long enough, something's going to get you. God said, Psalms 91, uh, you have 70 years, that's God's appointed time. After that, my mother would say, you're on grace time. And from there, it goes downhill. And if you make, make it to 80, all you did was put it down, the downhill into a higher gear. And if you make it to 90, you're in a Mustang going downhill at 80 miles an hour. So you, yeah, we got a couple of Mustangs back there on the, on the one, two, three, fourth row. <coughs> For bodily exercise profiteth little but godliness. Let me tell you something. I don't ever want to be accused of telling people Christianity is all fun and games. Oh, we have our good times, and it's the best life in the world. It's the only life worth living. But, but I want to tell you, being a good Christian is hard work. You have to prioritize a lot of things in your life. And, but I promise you, it's profitable. It's profitable. The blessing of Christ and His Word in this life and the life to come. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Then the third one is in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 11 and 12. 2 Timothy 2, verse 11 and 12. It is a faithful saying, or in other words, for Paul, this Paul said to Timothy, young man, this is going to happen. You better listen. It's a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Paul is saying to Timothy, you set out to live for God, and there will be some suffering. Suffering in the will of God is not bad. It earns 
crowns in the life to come. This verse is to show us the third foundation of the Christian life, duty. Obey God when you don't feel like it. Go on if people don't appreciate it. Stay faithful though others fall away. This shows the duty of the Christian life now and its consequences and rewards in the future. Suffering now, glory then. 1 Peter 2.21 Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. If you're going to be a good Christian, living in the world in which we live, sometimes there will be negative consequences, but never without God's care and never without God's reward. And then finally, young Titus, also a pastoral epistle, in chapter number three, a third, a fourth and final foundation to round out instruction to believers. Titus chapter three, verse number eight. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful or diligent to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. So the, the fourth pillar is, Christians, when, they're, when, when people come to Christ and they're saved and they're growing in Christ, we're left on earth to serve our Lord. We're salt, a preservative. We're light to show people their way. We are ambassadors to tell people about our homeland, heaven. A lot of people think uh, being a Christian is like going on vacation. No, it's, not, it's the other way around. It's like going to work. The vacation will come when you lay down the body and you go to be with the Lord. Oh, by the way, even there will be work and activity and assignments, but it will be in an absolute perfect environment in the presence of God. Every person sitting in this building, from the youngest to the to the uh, to the Mustang row, <laughs> has a job to do for God. It may be going, it may be serving, it may be visiting, it may be singing a special, it may be going to camp, but it may be doing the PA system, it may be doing the songs, it may be teaching a class, it may be what you give every person in this building. We are a spiritual body called Washington Street Baptist Church. And every person sitting here, you have some gift from God to make this church work. By the way, you know your greatest gift? Doesn't matter whatever, whatever else your gift may be, but one thing that every one of us have is this, faithfulness. Faithfulness. Your greatest gift is faithfulness. We sing the little song a lot more on Wednesday night than on Sunday. We'll work till Jesus comes and we'll be carried home. Did you know at 12 times the noun word laborer is in the New Testament? And 11 times the verb laborer is in the New Testament. You go back and you look at Romans, the last chapter, chapter 16, how Paul thanked person after person after person that were laborers together with him. We, 1 Corinthians says, are laborers together with God. Paul said, uh, let us be faithful in laboring for the kingdom of Christ. Paul said, pray ye therefore that the Lord will send forth laborers into his vineyard. So, in conclusion, 
We have the root of salvation in free grace. Then we have that the privileges of that salvation in the life which now is suffering and service. And then we have the eternal blessedness of being forever with the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul found these faithful sayings true. So did Timothy. So did Titus. So have many of you. And so will all who continue in the Christian walk. It is a faithful saying. Amen. Would you stand please? They will bow. Every eye closed. I pray the Lord to take the scriptures, not necessarily what I said, though that too, but especially the scriptures, and apply them to your heart and life. My heart's desire is, you know, this this hour together at 1045, this is the easy part of being a Christian, but this, this is the fun part of hard part is when you leave here and you got a whole week to live out there in the godless world. My heart's desire, my burden, my yearning is for you to be able to live successfully as a Christian all week long. That's my burden. That's my prayer. That's what I pray for you about all week long. So let me encourage you to be faithful. If you want, if you want to receive Christ as your Savior, Step out and come forward. If you need to join the church, step out and come forward. If we can pray with you, step out and come forward. Let me pray. We're going to sing an invitation song. Our Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we don't have any excuses for not knowing because it's there. And Lord, I pray what has been done today will be in the hearts and minds of people to let our light shine for Christ. We pray, save the lost, add to the church, strengthen the church in these times. And we'll thank you for that. We ask that in the name and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to sing number 121. Number 121. Sing with us. Number 121.